Hey friends, what would we do without our canned biscuits? They're a lifesaver on those busy mornings, and I bet most of you have a can in the refrigerator right now. Over the last few years, the development and marketing teams at Pillsbury have taken our morning staple and wowed us with amazing recipe after recipe using these little golden gems. I'm taking you on an epic journey through my 10 best ever canned biscuit recipes. We'll start with breakfast and appetizers and travel all the way through dinner and desserts. So buckle up friends and let's pop open a can of biscuits together. Let's start with some Taco Ranch Biscuit Bites. These are a great little appetizer. These start with one pound of ground beef that has had all of the extra fat drained off of it. And we're gonna add in a one can of Rotel diced tomatoes and chilies undrained. And one envelope of just your favorite taco seasoning. We're also gonna put in a third a cup of water into this mixture and we're gonna combine all of this and just let it simmer and cook down a little bit. We wanna remove that from the heat and we're gonna add in one cup of your favorite bottled ranch dressing, two cups of shredded cheese. I just used a couple different ones I had on hand and needed to use up. I think cheddar tastes great in this. You're gonna mix all this together and this is a great appetizer to make ahead of time. You can make this mixture and put it in the refrigerator and then you're ready when the night comes just to pull it out. You can also freeze this mixture. I have done that as well. And we're gonna bake this up in mini muffin pans and you use this small can of tin biscuits. Now I could not get the flaky layers. That would be perfect here, they would pull apart but I just had to kind of tear mine in half and then form them back in the shape of a little biscuit and then just push them down in my muffin tin and make a little cup out of them. You're just gonna take a little spoonful of your mixture and put in each one of your cups and don't do like me, I overfill everything. They were still delicious, but I definitely always put too much mixture in mine. But this does make a lot. Like I said, I froze some of this and put it back to use at a later date. Gonna get all those filled and put them in a 375 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes. You can see mine did come out the sides a little, but that is okay. These were absolutely delicious. I made these for a women's Christmas party at church and I've made them for us to have at home. You can even make them on a regular size biscuit if you like. This is a wonderful flavor combination with the taco and the ranch dressing. I love this. Not anything I would have ever thought to put together and they're so cute when they're baked on the little small biscuit with that bottom. These were absolutely delicious delicious. Now one of my favorite ways to use up leftovers is by making Grand's mini pizzas. And these are items that I keep in my pantry all the time. It's a great way to just use up any bit of leftover. I even had a half a pound of ground beef that was already cooked up and was in my freezer that needed to be used. Just had to thaw that out. And this is a great way to use up any little leftovers of barbecue or anything like that that you have. I did chop me a little bit of onion to go on mine and I made my pepperonis just a little bit smaller. And these you just take your biscuits and kind of spread them out a little bit, make them just a little bit bigger and a little bit flatter. And you're just gonna use a little bit of pizza sauce. And of course, you've got to have cheese. When I'm making something pizza-y, I like to sprinkle Italian seasoning on it. I think it makes it pretty. I think it adds another layer of flavor, and it's just a real easy, cheap way to add something extra to your meal. Now, we had, like I said, some ground beef. This is wonderful with either ground sausage, if you like that, or just regular breakfast sausage. I like onions. Of course, like I said, you could put sloppy joes on this. You could put taco meat, barbecue chicken, just let your mind go crazy with any of the toppings that you would like. You could do any of that. And you cook these about 10 minutes on 375 degrees and these puff up so pretty 
and it tastes like your own little personal pan pizza without even having to leave the house. These are perfect for a quick and easy lunch. We actually had them for dinner here with a little pasta salad and some veggies. They're also great as appetizers and any kind of snack. And it, like I said, a great way to use up leftovers. I pull this out a lot. Now I'm going to show you some sausage cream cheese stuffed biscuits and these are not only great for breakfast but also as an appetizer and the seasonings and things over there on the right you don't have to put that in there but I enjoy these little dried onions as I'm cooking up my meat I love the flavor it gets and it's not like having a big piece of raw onion in there. While that sausage is cooking up, I'm just gonna take these flaky layer biscuits and I'm gonna put them in half so we'll get 20 biscuits out of these. You're just gonna take each half and push it down into a regular size greased muffin tin, again, making a little bit of cup for your mixture to go into. And these are even easier to work with than the little taco bites. You can see here that my sausage is now all ground up and I'm just gonna put that in a bowl with one block of softened cream cheese. I'm gonna add a couple dashes of Worcestershire sauce and I am going to put a little pepper in mine and some anti no nos which is salt, onion powder, and garlic powder. I'm gonna put in about a cup of cheddar cheese and mix all this up and the warm sausage helps that cream cheese mix in so perfectly. You're gonna to top those biscuits with this, and if you like, you can come back over the top of them with a little more shredded cheese. This is another recipe that is so easy to double and freeze this mixture for a rainy day when you don't feel like cooking breakfast or you need a quick snack. You can make it up and just keep it in the fridge all week and pull it out as you wanna use it. Again, perfect snack, appetizer, and breakfast. This one really does double duty. We love these and I believe you will too. As always, I will have you a recipe link for every single thing in this video down in the description box. If you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a big thumbs up. We're getting ready to head into the bubble up bake portion of the program and I have about five of these in no particular order of how I like them, but we're going to start with the last one I made, which was a cracked out chicken bubble up bake. So hold on tight. We're going to hit them hard and hit them fast. Okay, here's probably the only bubble up bake I've ever made. This is cracked out chicken bubble up. Starting with two cups of chicken. You can use a rotisserie. You can use canned chicken. I like to cook my own chicken every week in the crock pot and have it on hand. Anything I don't use that week, I can freeze. Into that, we're gonna put in one can of cream of chicken soup. If you don't have cream of chicken, I'm sure cream of mushroom cream of onion, any of those would work. We're gonna add one generous cup of shredded cheddar cheese, eight ounces of sour cream, and I'm just kinda eyeballing everything here. Calls for a fourth a cup of chopped bacon, and I'm just gonna use some of these real bacon pieces, like what you would put on a salad. One thing I will be precise with is the ranch dressing seasoning mix. This recipe said one and a half tablespoons, but after reading the comments on this video, a lot of people said this was pretty salty. So they cut back on it and I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm doing about a teaspoon and a half instead of a tablespoon and a half. Give all that a big mix. In my area, I am pretty much only able to find this 16 ounce can of eight grams biscuits. Most of these recipes for the bubble up bakes call for the 12 ounce can of Grand's Junior Biscuits. I can never find those. So what I have learned is just, you want 12 ounces of biscuits, you're gonna cut them all up, right? So if you just take two biscuits out, you got 12 ounces right here. And it also says to cut each biscuit into four pieces. Well, as I have worked my way through Pillsbury's entire catalog 
of bubble up bakes, <laughs> it seems this last year, I have found I like cutting them in eight pieces. I think the little pieces just do better. And I will usually stack them up and do two biscuits at a time. I'll do my best to just say this one time and not repeat it through every one of these bubble up recipes. So if you don't hear me specify that I'm using a different amount, this right here is what you're getting in every bubble up bake. You can just bake these up alongside and have a couple extra biscuits, or you can throw them in the refrigerator and they keep okay for a day or two. Now here comes the fun part. You're just going to try to coat all of these biscuits with this chicken mixture and kind of stir them in. I always do mine a little bit at a time. I just think that works out better. I also think cutting them into smaller pieces is a big help at this stage as well. Now you're just gonna turn this entire mixture into a greased and nine by 13 casserole dish. I always like to come back at this point as I'm spreading it out and make sure that my biscuits are distributed kind of evenly through here. You don't want them all bunched up in one place. And also each one of these mixtures, whether you're using the chicken or you're doing a ground beef one or pizza, just depending on what's in them, each one is just a little different, you know, moisture content. Something that I have read a lot of people do is to not actually stir the biscuits in. They cut them up and they put them on the top of the mixture. And then when there's about five minutes left in baking, they'll coat them with some melted butter and let them brown up that way. And that's fine, you can try that. I've never done it that way because I really like them baked down in here. I like how some of them are kind of coated a little bit more. I like that. You could also throw a little bit of extra cheese on the top of this in the last few minutes of baking, but hey, honestly, it doesn't need it. Before mine goes in the oven, I just like to sprinkle a little parsley on top just to make it kind of pretty. And this is going in a 350 degree oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. It may take longer. Like I said, each one just depends on the moisture content, how your oven cooks, and how deep your dish is. Ooh, this is smelling good. And it's looking even better. I ended up going about 40 minutes with mine. You can see how everything is all bubbly and gooey. Like I really don't see how you could need any more cheese in this. You can see the pieces along the edges. They get a little bit more done, but I really like that middle part too. I'm gonna let this set for about five or 10 minutes before we cut into it. I've seen people bake these up in bunt pans too, like you would monkey bread and do it like kind of like pull apart bread. I've not tried that though. This cracked out bubble up bake was a hit with everyone in our family. We absolutely loved it. What's not to love about the cracked out chicken, but this, just like all of the bubble up bakes, the top was so brown and wonderful and the flavors just got soaked up into everything. Absolutely delicious and I think all of these pair so well with just a salad so it makes a simple, quick and easy weeknight dinner. You can get it on the table in no time. Now I want to share with you the taco biscuit bubble up bake. This one starts with one pound of taco meat just prepared to your liking. And I actually had a pound of taco meat in the freezer here. And you see me over there cutting my biscuits like I told you about earlier while my taco meat is heating back through. I also cut up a little green onion to go in this and some for the top of it. Once you have all of your taco meat fixed up, you do wanna make sure that you get any excess grease out of that. And then you're gonna add in one can of black beans that's been rinsed and drained. You're gonna add in a small can of red enchilada sauce. And we're just gonna mix all of this together. You're gonna let this cook up and cook down just a little bit, get everything heated thoroughly. 
Now we have our bowl full of biscuits and we're going to add in a cup of a Mexican cheese blend is what I'm using. You can use whatever you like in here. Throw in a little bit of that green onion. Then we're going to add in our taco meat and bean mixture. You just want to combine these gently like you do all of them. Just try not to squish those biscuits down too much. Going to put it in a grease, a 9 by 13 pan. Of course, you always want to make sure your biscuits are spread out nice and evenly. Going to put this in a 375 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. Pull it out and sprinkle you just another little bit of cheese right over the top and give it another five minutes in the oven to brown up. This one is absolutely delicious just like all of them. You can see it bubbling down in there. That's always my favorite part when you pull these out and it was so easy quick and simple especially since I had some taco meat already in the freezer. That's just a little tip if you have some extra meat and time to cook those things up and keep them in the freezer for these easy weeknight meals. This pleased everyone. Even my pickiest eater here liked this and she's not a big fan of black beans but she really liked this too. If you like Tex-Mex you're gonna love this and the biscuits they're always just perfectly done. They're not soggy and they're not dried out. We topped ours with a little sour cream and green onions. Go crazy and top it with whatever you enjoy on a taco. The French onion chicken bubble up bake is one that I have just found in the last four or five months and we love it. When I saw that this recipe had French onion chip dip in it, I knew I had to try it. And your base starts with two cups of cooked chicken. Into that we're going to put one can of cream of chicken soup and we're going to add one cup of sour cream French onion dip. You need to make sure you have the refrigerated sour cream dip for this recipe. I'm going to put in one cup of cheddar cheese and then mix all of this together. I'm cutting my biscuits just like I showed you each one into eight small pieces and we're going to mix all this together. Now here my heart is saying I haven't put any seasoning in here but just trust the process. You really don't need it with that chip dip. There's plenty of salt and seasonings in that. So just try to hold back from adding anything. You really don't need it. I'm going to put this out in the 9 by 13 greased casserole dish and then this recipe says to use a fourth a cup of the french fried onions to squish them up and sprinkle them over the top. I didn't think that sounded like very much so I just tried a little bit and yeah that was not enough so I just did a little bit more over the top of mine and you can also mix some of these down inside of this if you wanted to as well. This one's going in a 350 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. This one right here totally won my family over. Wow, it's amazing flavor. It is perfect. I knew that we would probably like it because we like chicken and we like these bubble up bakes, but I wondered about the onion. Was it going to be too much? It was not too much. Everybody here loved it. It was totally unexpected. I don't know why, but you know, thinking back, I put Lipton onion soup mix in a lot of recipes. So this really smart idea to use the French onion chip dip down in this recipe. That was really smart. Whoever put this together, it is rich and hearty. This is a great recipe for fall. It has all of the wonderful things that we love in it. And we again just put a salad with it and had it for a quick, easy weeknight dinner. Now we're going to do a classic pizza bubble up bake. And I'm starting by browning up one pound of just ground chuck and I'm going to get all of the grease off of it. This is a nifty little trick. If you have a lot of grease, you can just line a bowl with some aluminum foil and strain your meat over it. Then when that hardens up, you can just throw that aluminum foil away and you're good to go. And here is the biscuit cutting up eight pieces each one. 
going to go ahead and throw that into my bowl and, and then we'll start adding in all of our ingredients to mix. It calls for 15 ounces of pizza sauce, but I just had like a ragu spaghetti sauce, so that's what I used. And I'm putting in that Italian seasoning because I love it in all things pizza flavored. Now we're just going to put in the hamburger meat. You could use ground Italian sausage here. You could use breakfast sausage. Just use whatever you like is perfect. There's nothing right or wrong about these. You make them with what your family likes. Of course, you're going to spread it out in a 9 by 13 grease casserole dish and come across the top with a couple nice big handfuls of some mozzarella cheese. going to bake this one at 375 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. But wait, I forgot I was putting pepperoni on half of this. So I yanked it back out. I didn't want pepperoni on my half. And you can also stir the pepperonis down in here if you wanted to. But I just wanted to use them like a topping. So got that back in the oven. And look how pretty this is. I think this is one of the prettiest ones because it really does look like a big pan pizza. And you can see me checking the biscuit dough here. I just always do that and make sure that, you know, it's going to be gooey, but you don't want it doughy. That's how you know it's done. If it's still doughy, it's not done. Give it just a few more minutes. But we absolutely love this one. It's so budget friendly. All of these are with just the ground beef and sauce and cheese, stuff that you have on hand. Delicious, easy, budget-friendly weeknight meals. And no surprise, you see a salad back there. Now we're gonna do a chicken pot pie bubble up bake. This was one of the first bubble ups I ever made. And I'm just shredding some chicken here that I've made in the crock pot. I do that about once a week or so. And we're gonna use two cups of it, but we're gonna start with a can of cream of chicken soup. We're gonna put in one cup of sour cream and one cup of cheddar cheese. And I'm also gonna use about a cup and a half of some frozen vegetables. And I did put my veggies in right from frozen. I didn't thaw them, I didn't microwave them, steam them, or anything. This bubble up bake will cook long enough that your vegetables will get nice and tender. And I did go ahead and throw in just a little bit of salt, pepper, and some garlic powder into this. going to get all of that mixed together and then come back and add in that shredded chicken and get everything mixed up and coated thoroughly. Here is the biscuit cutting up and you'll see here this was back when I cut them into four pieces. This was before I learned that eight pieces works better than four. But we are going to stir those in too and it turned out fine. Of course we're going greased in 9 by 13 pan and spread it all out. Make sure your biscuits are evenly distributed. Bake this one 35 to 45 minutes in a 350 degree oven. And is that not a beautiful casserole? The veggies and the cheese make it so pretty. This is one of the prettiest ones, I think. And you can see the bubble and the sizzle. This is a delicious, comforting, cozy meal. So satisfying, really. You don't even have to have anything else. You've got your meat, your veggies, and your bread all in one. Perfect for weeknight meals and totally family and budget friendly. And that is about everything I know about Bubble Up Bakes. Tell me in the comments your favorite Bubble Up Bake. I want to try it if I haven't made it yet. So let's move on to dessert. And this is a beautiful pumpkin pull apart loaf bread. And I'm just going to start this recipe by mixing up about a fourth a cup of white sugar and a teaspoon of cinnamon. And now I'm just going to set that over to the side. Now we're going to work on our filling for this loaf. And we're going to have a quarter cup of sugar, a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, and also a teaspoon of vanilla. We're going to add in three-fourths cup of pure pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling, and one egg. And we're just going to mix all of this together. 
this is one of my family's most favorite fall desserts. I think I make this two or three times every year. Now these grand biscuits, we're just gonna cut them in half. You would think it would be much easier just to use the flaky layers where you can pull them in half, but this recipe specifically said do not use the flaky layer biscuits. So I found that laying three or four of them together on their side and cutting them down like that was the best way to get a nice even cut on them. You're gonna take each piece and coat it in your cinnamon and sugar, and then you're gonna put a little of your pumpkin filling. And I'm just gonna build a little tower here that's probably three or four biscuits high. This is just a little process that you just continue, coating the biscuits and adding the filling. Then do another biscuit and more filling. I've got a greased loaf pan, and once I get just a few stacked up, I'm gonna put these on their side in the loaf pan. And I used a little mini whisk to kinda hold mine in place, and you're just gonna repeat this process. Now, I did find, after making a few of these, that when I turned my loaf pan up on its side, I could stack them in there a little bit easier and they stayed. It's kind of messy, but it's supposed to be kind of messy. It's a very rustic looking dessert. It's not a perfect looking dessert, which is perfect for me because I'm not good at making food look pretty, but I'm good at making it taste good. And don't forget to put the pumpkin filling in between the last biscuit and the next ones that you put in there. I almost forgot that. You wanna make sure you have pumpkin between each and every biscuit. And I forgot to mention, you are not dipping these biscuits in butter. You are just taking them straight out of the can and putting the sugar and cinnamon on them. And I've got my last four in here. I'm just gonna straighten it up just a little bit. And I had a smidgen of cinnamon sugar left, so I just decided that it needed to go on the top and kind of down in between those a little bit. So I just kind of put all of that on, you know, waste not, want not. And this is going in a 350 degree oven for 30 to 40 minutes. Again, you want it gooey, but not doughy. So I looked at mine and mine was still doughy. So what I decided to do was actually reduce the heat to 325 degrees and I covered it in full. And I baked it five minutes and checked it. And then I baked it five more and it was perfect. It was easy to pull each little piece apart without it being doughy. It's gonna be sticky because of your pumpkin, but it's not doughy, it's completely done and perfect. Look how pretty and rustic this dessert is, and you wanna let it cool completely in that pan. And I'm just making a little icing to go on the top. I'm using about a half a cup of powdered sugar, about a teaspoon of cinnamon, and I'm just gonna stir in about three tablespoons of milk to start with. Always just start with a little and you can add more. I ended up adding more powdered sugar because you want it to be a little bit of a thicker glaze. And this glaze tastes so good. It was really yummy when you put that cinnamon in it and the color was so pretty on it too. And this was just a thing of beauty. It has so much flavor, the pumpkin and the cinnamon, absolutely delicious with a cup of coffee. You could eat this for breakfast if you can eat sweet stuff in the mornings. I can't, but it was great. Now I'm gonna show you some peach hand pies, and these are not fried pies like my mama used to make, but I'm gonna bake them up. And I'm just cutting up peaches. I like to do this about once a year. And you wanna dice them up really small, and I've got about two tablespoons of butter. I've added a teaspoon of vanilla in here, and I'm just heating this up on top of the stove. And I'm gonna get all that mixed together, and then I'm gonna add my peaches and start cooking them. You definitely don't have to do this. You can buy canned pie filling, but like I said, I like to do this about once at, towards the end of every summer. I'm gonna add in about a fourth a cup of white granulated sugar, and also gonna add in a fourth a cup of brown sugar. And I just sprinkled in a good little bit of pumpkin pie spice because I love that flavor. And I'm squirting in a couple little teaspoons full of lemon juice. And then you just wanna hit this with a pinch or two of salt. 
you're just going to cook this for a little while keep it stirred together it'll get simmery and gooey and sticky and it'll reduce down and honestly you don't even need a pie you could just eat this filling it's absolutely delicious but i do like to use usually the smaller biscuits for these but i only had grands here so i'm cutting them in half and then i do try to form it back into a little circle and of course you want to do this on a floured surface and i like these pies to be very little they're cute and really who needs a big pie we just need a little bitty pie right <laughs> so i like to roll it out with my rolling pin and get them nice and thin they don't have to be shaped perfect it's a very forgiving little pie and once you get them rolled out you want to fill about half of your biscuit with a little bit of the filling and then you're going to pull the other half over top and seal it with your fork around the edges mine are too full i'm a chronic overfiller i'm notorious for that but that's okay some stuff will come out of the side but it'll be fine it just makes them even better I like to brush them with just a little bit of melted butter and then sprinkle them with a little bit of cinnamon sugar. It gives them a really like crystally crunchy coating and the prettiest color ever. I love to put that on them. And I bake these at 350 for about 15 minutes. You just really want to keep an eye on them. You want them golden brown, but not overdone. And then we just mixed up a little bit of uh, cream cheesy icing and popped that over the top. These are so yummy and so pretty and so delicious. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the one on the screen and you can see the six best crescent roll recipes I've ever made. Thank you so much for watching. I love you to subscribe and until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.